trust what Noah said. A horse that is genuinely bonded with you will have your back and they'll want you to stay on their back. Well, how does that relate to real life, Queen? So let me show you. There was a message that I heard today. It was actually a Facebook Live. It was a teaching. And it was given by Noah of Steady Horse. I am part of a group called Steady Horse. It's an amazing group. And he's teaching us so much about um, horsemanship. And sometimes there's problems with our horses or things like that. Or just to have a better experience with owning horses, owning or riding horses. Well, he said something today that stood out to me and I just had to get on here and say this to you. I'm going to tell you what he said first. He said, a horse that is afraid of you is not going to trust you. Let me say that again. A horse that is afraid of you is not going to trust you. And then he says, people train using uh, fear or different tactics, and a horse that is afraid of you in a scary or dicey situation, he called it, the horse is more likely to buck you off than to have your back. Then he said, but a horse that trusts you will stick with you. That they want you on their back. Because they trust you, because that because you have built that confidence in them that you are a good leader, not one they have to be afraid of, but that you're a good leader and that you're going to be a faithful companion to them when they need you, that, they, that you are a partner that they can trust. And then he said, this may be a hard pill for some to swallow. And it may be. But he said, if a horse bucks you off, then the truth is the horse does not trust you, period. I'm going to say, hey, Selah, hold on, wait a minute, because that gave me life. He said, it. If you've been doing something with that horse, training that horse, and that horse has been doing what you've asked him to do within the training and all that, that does not mean that you have bonded with that horse. It depends on the method you've been using to train it. But the, in a scary situation, if that horse is, if those methods you have been used has provoked fear in that horse, they may have been doing it everywhere else. But in that situation, they are going to go back to self-preservation and they are going to want you off their back. We all know the truth about a situation is that those animals are powerful. It is an honor for them to allow us to ride. But if they really want you off their back, there is no bit, no tool, or nothing you can do to keep you on if they really want you off. Say la. He went on to say, but if you have bonded with that horse, and if that horse, if it genuinely trusts you, then they will want to do whatever is possible to keep you close to them because they believe you are the one who's going to keep them safe and they don't have to keep themselves safe, but you're going to do it for them. So they're going to do whatever is necessary to want you to stay on their back. They're not going to want you off their back. They know the difference. Very intelligent animals. So the breakthrough for me, it was a breakthrough when he said that. Because I've already felt it, but nobody had ever really said it, which is why another reason why we love you, Noah. When he said it, it was almost emotional for me, you guys. It really was. Because I know I have been in situations with my horses. All two I'll mention. One time, we went on a night ride. Now, my husband and I, for those who don't know us, we're kind of new to horses. We're three years in and we have young horses. They say don't do that unless you have a really good trainer and we do. So we've got young horses and we're really new to us, uh, four years old. And we had just started riding 
and we went on this night ride. It was supposed to be something wonderful, this strawberry moon. Well, we didn't know anything about night riding. We were with a group of us going, so we said, okay, maybe fun, whatever. I don't even know if we've ever been night riding after this or we'll ever go. So we went on this night ride and it was challenging in the first place. She was scared, I was scared, and we couldn't see. Well, I couldn't see. They said, horses can't see that. I couldn't see that good. So it's a bunch of us, though, and we're riding behind. The horse in front of us heard something in an electrical tower or something, and it spin around. Well, when it spin around, we were right next, right behind them. So Royal Lady spin around. And when Royal Lady spin around, she went one way, I went another way. I was in the ground looking up. And of course, the pe everybody around us same and stop. But what was important was Royal Lady walked back to where I was. She hadn't gone far because she didn't run from me. She just spin me. When she, as soon as she found out I was not on her back, she came over to me, looked down. And you guys, it's as if I could see in her eyes. I almost feel like tearing up right now. Mama, get back up. Get back on here. I'm scared. Keep me safe. I got back on, we finished the ride, but I remember telling my husband when we got home, I said, babe, it's like she was talking to me. When I was on the ground looking up at her, I felt like she was saying exactly what I just told you guys. Mama, get back on here. I'm scared. Keep me safe. She stood still. I got back on and of course, we, like I said, we finished the ride. There was this other time I was on Kingdom Baby, our other horse. Lawrence, my husband, was on Apostles' Creed. Now, Creed and Kingdom are brothers. And Creed is a year older than Kingdom. So he looks up to Kingdom, or he did at that time. Now they're kind of, <laughs> but he did at that time. He, was, he looks up to him, and was we were right following behind him, and we were on a very challenging ride this time. And we were going up a hill, and there was some rocks, and Creed lost his footing and he almost fell. He recovered and kept going. But we were right behind him on the hill. So Kingdom Baby saw what happened to Creed and he got scared and just stopped like this. And I, I had to talk to him. I said, Kingdom, keep mama safe. You can do this, Kingdom. I'm talking to the horse. You can do this. Keep mama safe. You got to get up this hill, kingdom. Something triggered in his brain when I kept talking to him and he just started going and we made it up the hill. And of course, I loved him up, patted him, etc. What does that mean for me in light of this conversation? It means he trusts me. It means they have... Uh, horses have personalities, but they understand. Don't you ever think a horse... Uh, is not intelligent enough to understand whether you have bonded with them or not and whether they can trust you. And I don't ever think that. Don't ever think that in a dicey situation or a scary situation that them fearing you alone is going to get you through that situation. Because the truth of the matter is those horses are powerful. They weigh a whole lot. Ain't no bit going to help you. Ain't no uh, harness or whatever tool you got going to help you when that horse really doesn't trust you and really wants to do something else. And if they don't want you on their back, guess what? They will buck you off and suffer consequences later. Because at that point, the first law of preservation is self-preservation. A person, a thing, an animal, whatever, is going to think about themselves before they think about you if they have not bonded with you. So then it went a step further for me. It went to thinking how many of us trust God enough not to buck him off? Not to buck him off when he's giving an instruction or telling us to do something. Not to buck him off when there's something he wants us to do. And you guys, I know a lot of my videos <laughs> end up at the same place, but guess what? This is the place in life where if you want anything else in your life to work correctly, this point right here has got to become monumental and important. Again, the question is, how many of us are trusting God enough that even through the hard places, 
even through the depressed stages, that we don't buck him off, that we don't totally forget everything that he's told us in the past, forget all of the teaching that we've learned, all of the things that he's previously said to you in your private time with him, and buck him off and say, this doesn't matter, I'm scared, I'm running. Our relationship has to be to the point that even in those dicey situations, Noah called it. We stay on the horse. We stay in the place of obedience. Now, this can transfer from anything else in your life. It can transfer into business. It can transfer into relationships. It can go into your marriage because we all know sometimes there's dicey situations and we ain't completely happy with that person. We want to buck them off. <laughs> Don't buck them off. Allow the relationship that you have with them to supersede the emotion that you're feeling in the moment. I hope that helps somebody. I love you. In my